So uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, we're very pleased and participating to, uh, to this panel uh, with the, uh, the other OEM to discuss uh, you know, what customer's demand is around the airplane for the future. And uh, maybe uh, just before I, I start with uh, explaining what we, we foresee as being, you know, what's important out there for our customer, uh, maybe I'd like to introduce Bombardier a little. So uh, Bombardier, as you know, is uh, manufacturing, uh, you know, b uh, business jet. But more importantly for this audience, we are also a manufacturer of the turboprop, the Q uh, series, and also the CRJ regional aircraft, uh, all the, in the jet family. As I said, business jet, we do uh, Challenger, we do the, uh, the uh, Learjet family, and also the Global Express. So we're gonna be talking, focusing more on the regional business here today. And uh, you know, some of my colleagues, of course, will promote the turboprop, some others will promote the, uh, the RJs, but we are promoting both, uh, both platform because we do believe there's a future for both. We have uh, Bombardier right now, 1,600 uh, RJs flying in the world. Uh, a majority of it in the U.S. We have also uh, more than a thousand uh, Q-series airplane uh, flying around the world. So uh, it, those are significant. Uh, uh, it is a significant presence in the U.S. Uh, I think one thing to realize, in the U.S. alone, 30% of all departure and landing every day in the U.S. are by a Bombardier airplane, 30%. So of course, we, uh, we've, we're flying short cycle so it is a significant number of, uh, of airplanes flying out there. Uh, so, uh, so our turboprop is manufactured in, in our facility in Diablo in Toronto, and our CRJs are manufactured in Montreal in, uh, in Mirabel. And uh, basically what we want to discuss today, and I think you know, it's going to come up with questions a little bit later, uh, there are six uh, area of, uh, I would say, concern or opportunity uh, that are on the table every day with our customer these days. And I think we, uh, not to mention right now, price of oil is definitely a, a key concern for everybody. Uh, I was watching this morning, it was again up by 3% and over $100 a barrel. So it's, uh, it's moving, it's very volatile. And of course, in terms of uh, reducing environmental footprint and also in terms of lowering operating costs, uh, people are asking for solution on how we are going to reduce uh, fuel emission and also reducing their operating costs with the fuel at $100 a barrel. So of course we're coming up with differently, different solution depending and we can offer both. Uh, the turboprop is clearly a solution that is becoming more and more popular. For those who attend our media briefing this morning, I was sharing with the audience that uh, we have today versus 2006, five years later, five times more flight every day are turboprop mainly Bombardier airplane in the U.S. alone. So uh, the price of oil was at $26 a barrel in 2006. It is today over $100. So of course the incentive for flying more and more turboprop is there. But of course it depends on your mission. Uh, you know, we are offering probably a broader range because our airplane is the fastest one out there in terms of turboprop. But then when people have uh, achieved a certain uh, range, uh, CRJs for speed and for, for other also uh, uh, falls into play. And of course, we still have out there today the most economical solution. Uh, we've always been renowned with our CRJ for the fuel efficiency of our platform. And uh, this morning, again, I was talking about the CRJ 1000, which uh, is 4% uh, better than what we promised in our brochure when we launched the product. It's operating right now only in Europe, uh, in Spain and in France with Britair and Aaron Nordstrom. But we are very delighted with the result. Uh, you know, uh, good entry into service also at 99.4% uh, uh, dispatch reliability, and, uh, and we're very pleased with that. So, so de definitely reduce environmental footprint. Uh, noise is also a, a key concern. And of course, with our C Series, which is going to be more the 100 to the 149 uh, market uh, seat. Uh, we have a, a, a new game changer. Uh, we've designed a perfect airplane fully optimized for that market, and the C Series is coming into play with very reduced emissions and also uh, noise level. Um, our airplane also are offering a lot of flexibility for the operator. So it's kind of a natural when you have a 50 seater to grow into a 70 seater and a 90 seater or even eventually to a CRG 1000 because of the commonality for pilots, commonality for the maintenance people. Uh, and the same thing for our Q-series. 
Uh, we also apply uh, a lot of into the, the cabin fix flexibility. This morning I was um, disclosing that we are going to offer on the Q400 a dual class. We're gonna deliver the first airplane this summer. So again, uh, after discussion with customer, the Q400, you know, was, uh, was uh, you know, being requested to have that, that option. So it's an option of it that will start to be available uh, this summer for all uh, our customer. Uh, we are offering more comfort. Comfort is also an important uh, topic with our customer. And I will highlight also connectivity. So we have project on the table today. You know, everybody is dreaming about walking into an airplane with his BlackBerry and have all, uh, you know, uh, full connectivity right away. So those are the kind of things we're, uh, we're looking at. I've mentioned uh, in lower operating costs already the fuel efficiency, but also very, very important maintenance costs. So uh, people are concerned with maintenance costs creeping up, and uh, we are, uh, you know, especially if I, I give as an example the C-Series with the, uh, the, uh, the Pratt & Whitney engine also, we are very thorough in terms of developing a, a good maintenance and, and cost-effective solution uh, for our product. Uh, of course, lower weight. Uh, we are probably at state of the art on technology here. We have a, uh, uh, you know, on the C series, especially a, a uh, you know, a fully composite wing. We're going to be manufacturing a composite wing out of our facility in Belfast. Uh, this is a, a first in our market, and uh, we are doing the same thing on the Lear 85 also. So this is a technology that we do master, that we've developed through the years, and this is going to reduce weight and also maintenance costs uh, favorably, uh, affect maintenance costs favorably. Uh, financing is another topic also that is a concern out there. So people are saying, you know, uh, how are we going to finance airplane in the future? So that's one thing also that we are uh, developing new solutions. And uh, another one that is key is customer support and, and, and offering an amazing, an amazing customer experience. Uh, it's nice to have a good airplane, but you have to be able to maintain it day in and day out, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, everywhere in the world. And we do have that capability. We have some of the most renowned uh, service center here in the US. We're very pleased with that. One of them uh, got a, a special uh, diamond recognition from the FAA this year uh, because of their uh, service uh, and, 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 uh, and training program. So uh, we're very pleased with that. And we're committed to have more parts available around the world and, of course, uh, service in here. So, uh, so we'll uh, wait for the question later. Thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, distinguished uh, panelist to present is the uh, Mitsubishi's Executive Vice President, Jun Miyakawa. How was that for Japanese and Southern? 